Hey guys, and welcome back to a brand new video. Today we're back with another weekly recap, which is on Wednesday. Not really sure why the update was a day early. Maybe they're going to be doing that every day in quarantine, but that totally flew by me. But anyway, we have a content update today, uh, which adds some more things from poll number 70. On top of that, we have a new Gillenor Gazette for April, which will give us some interesting insights. Uh, to add what the dev team is working on, how progress is coming on some of the major updates. I'm sure there'll be some other interesting tidbits of information there. As always, I'll be going over anything related to the old school RuneScape community this week, and if the Q&A gets released in the next couple of hours, we'll be going over that as well. Anyway guys, hope you enjoy, and let's get started. Now, today's game update is introducing more changes from poll number 70, and probably one of the biggest updates is the Blade of Saldor can now be permanently charged with crystal shards. Now you can use 1000 crystal shards on a blade of Saldor at a singing bolt to permanently prevent it from degrading. You will need level 82 crafting and smithing to do this. Now if you already have a charged blade of Saldor from before the update it's going to automatically divide the number of remaining charges by 100, round it down and take that number of shards away from the amount that you use on it. So don't be alarmed if you get more shards back that is intended. Now this is a massive change for a few different reasons. For one, the Blade of Saldor is probably going to be worth close to 200 mil pretty soon, which makes the Corrupted Gauntlet probably one, or if not, the best money-making method in the entire game right now. And I think overall it's going to bring even more players to Prift in this. Now keep in mind, the tradable Crystal Shards did not pass, so you will still have to collect the Crystal Shards yourself, either via farming, the Gauntlets, Zolcano, whatever, but you'll have to do it yourself. The Elven Signet has actually been buffed. The percentage save rate on the Elven Signet has been raised from 5% to 10%. Now there's a 10% chance of not using the charge when you're using one of the crystal tools or crystal equipment. Now the Mossy Keys have an increased chance of dropping for Moss Giants in the Wilderness. So now the rates are 1 out of 150 normally, 1 out of 100 in the Wilderness, and 1 out of 50 on a Slayer task. Now the pulled changes to the Ironwood Dungeon are now in the game. There's now a new room where you'll be able to find some traitorous Eyeworth warriors for your elf slaying needs, and also NPC spawns across the dungeon have been increased. Now changes to the Grand Exchange are pretty far and few between, however today we got the last item searched function. Now, the last item that you have searched for on the Grand Exchange will be remembered until you search for a new item or log out of the game. Now this will appear in your search window before you type anything, uh, so it's really not that intrusive. Okay, so there's actually kind of an important change to the chat box menu. You can now use the space button to reselect the last thing you created on a make x chat box menu, uh, which is going to make it a lot easier to do anything with those menus. Now another really big change to the crystal shards is you can now deconstruct crystal tool, armor, and weapon seeds, as well as the enhanced teleport crystal, into the following amount of shards. For a crystal weapon seed it's going to be 10 shards, crystal tool seed is 100, Crystal Armor Seed 250 and the Enhanced Teleport Crystal is 150 and now all of the prices have adjusted accordingly. So there is the benefit that all of these items will be now worth something as long as the Blade of Saldor has some value and Crystal Shards have value. Okay and finally here are the Burnt Pages that show up in the Winter Tot Supply Crates. When you do get them as a reward you'll now get 50% more. And one other minor change is you need to turn in 250 Burnt Pages for a Tome of Fire now instead of 100. As always, there are minor bug fixes and quality of life changes, but that is pretty much it for today's content update. Alright, next up here we have the Gillenor Gazette for the month of April, and I really like the March one, so I'm excited to give this one a read. The entire purpose of these is to give updates on future content updates, a little bit of an inside look on how they're developing things. Now, to begin with here, they have a list of projects that they're currently working on, and they have a little bit of a blurb on all of them. Now, the first one is Darkmire. Now they acknowledge that the sudden shift to working from home has had an impact on the development. Now the time frame they're given here is going to be Sins of the Father and Darkmire will come sometime in the summer. Alright guys, summer 2020, that's when we're getting the update. Now they mentioned high scores here and I have to say they are better, they do work now. The load time of the high score system has been drastically improved. To do this we have had to increase the minimum requirement to get on the boss high score table. And they're still monitoring the situation and we'd like to decrease the kill count requirement over time but uh, they're not ready to do that yet. Uh, they do mention a bit about leagues. Uh, they are really close to releasing a new league design, it seems. Uh, they made some great progress on the design for the second league, which is something the team is really excited for. They said they learned a lot from the very first league, and the second league will have addressed a lot of the pain points as they have listened to your feedback. Now, they also mentioned early game improvements. Uh, they recently released the Gatherer Path, and they can now reflect on the impact of the early game experience. 
They're expecting to run a test with some tutorial island changes soon, but the team is currently focusing on a top secret project which we hope will give players something awesome to engage in while we're all in lockdown. Well that has piqued my interest, what do you guys think that is? You know what my prediction is, I think it's King of the Skill 2. King of the Skill was something that was really fun for the community and probably didn't take that much work on Jagex's part, so I, I would expect them to do another one. Now they do mention a bit on the clan system and they say it is getting closer for a release. Mod Boko has just about finished up work on the core part of the clan system. Once the work is completed on Bounty Hunter and the death rework, we can start developing clan content primarily. Now as Group Ironman is built on the same core infrastructure as the clan system, they can't really make much progress on it until that is done. However, the good news is that they pretty much established all of the core design elements, and they've also started to work on the high score support for Group Ironman. Okay, so a very small sentence here, but very important. The next quest in the Karen storyline is still in the very early design process, However, we're coming up with the rewards, which include a new selection of powerful Arceus spells. Now, what do you guys think those are going to be? I'm very curious about that. I mean, an Arceus spellbook rework is kind of needed anyway. The entire spellbook is bloated with the reanimate spells, which really could easily be boiled down to a smaller amount of spells. So I am very curious if there's going to be higher level unsold heads or just completely different spells altogether more necromancy related things, maybe some more teleports, I don't know. The Arceus spellbook actually is so weird, it literally just has teleports and the reanimate spells, so it really could use more. Okay, next on the agenda is the PVM achievements. Now this is a concept that would allow high level players to challenge themselves with fiendishly tough restrictions on boss fights and track those challenges in a way that you could show off to others. And they think achievements would be a great medium for that. Uh, we hope to move into development sometime after League 2. Achievements would run the gamut of difficulty from kill the giant mole without taking any damage to complete the inferno in under 70 minutes. Honestly, sounds like a really fun idea. It probably wouldn't require that much dev time for how long players would be kept busy for. Now, there's a bit on account security and login issues. There's ongoing service attacks and login issues are impacting other projects, including the account security work. We are coming up with a long-term solution to these problems and reviewing what we can do to help players in the short term. I gotta reiterate though, do not hop worlds too much. You could get booted for a long period of time. I've been booted for four hours at a time, so yeah, just don't do it. Now one really big quality of life change they want to work on soon is a redesign of the settings menu. It's definitely something that feels a bit bloated as toggles have been added throughout the years, more settings, more customizable options. Yes, the settings menu is a bit cramped to say the least. As what's their solution? To completely overhaul the settings menu, tidy it up, make it so that new players can find the settings they're looking for where you'd expect them. This is actually a great idea. It's something that I take for granted. I know where all of these options are. Actually, I don't. That's a lie. It's a very confusing menu. So I think especially for new players, having a search function for settings, organizing it in a actual logical way, for example, display options, audio options, chat options, controls. And I think that's a really good idea. And now that I think about it, I think this should even be maybe a bit of a priority. Now, before going ahead and changing a key part of the game, they want to gather some feedback. What would make or break the settings menu for you? What could you do to make it more intuitive? Honestly, the design they have right here looks really good to me. And finally here, there's a bit of a dev blog on the Hallowed Sepulchre, more of a dev insight, not really a blog. I'm not going to go over that today because it's kind of long and not too impactful on the actual game, but I will definitely go ahead and give it a read. If you go down to the reward section, they do have, I think, maybe a few more rewards for inside the actual Sepulchre, including a Hallowed Ring, a Hallowed Hammer, a Hallowed Symbol, a Hallowed Focus, a Hallowed Grapple, and a Hallowed Token, which are all going to actually help out in the Agility activity and won't be used outside of it. Alright, that is it for the Gilinor Gazette, and that is pretty much it for content updates this week. Uh, well, it doesn't really look like the Q&A is going to be coming out today, or maybe not at all this week, but I think the Gilinor Gazette probably highlighted a lot of the questions that would be asked anyway. Uh, so finally here, I just want to go over a few interesting pieces of community news. And one I found really interesting is Mod Lottie has posted a few more stats yesterday, and one of them is the least amount of time to max total level. And I found this one really fascinating. For a normal account, it's about 2,156 hours. Uh, for an Ironman, it's 3,522. Ultimate Ironman is 4,954. And the Hardcore Ironman is 2,863. Now the EHP for maxing, a regular account is said to be about 1,800 hours, which means that nobody has ever done that before. Which I think is pretty fascinating because I think in the back of a lot of our minds, people seem to think that EHP is expected. 
Another interesting stat is the average daily playtime has increased by one hour uh, since the lockdown, making it 4.5 hours, that's crazy. And finally here, what do you guys think of the OSRS Enhanced that was posted by Sir Pugger and on Reddit? I kind of have mixed feelings about it. I think it does look good sometimes and it looks very awkward others. I personally would like to see a RuneScape HD or Enhanced, but personally I think I would like maybe a graphical option a bit more true to what old school RuneScape actually looks like because I think the graphics are pretty charming, but this one here isn't even a finished project, so we'll see what happens. Anyway guys, that is going to be it for today's weekly recap. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, I'd appreciate it if you left the video a like, and I will see you next time.